today we are dealing with love me more. Last two weeks we dealt with love me. And we made a few statements last week. And <clears throat> this week we are dealing with love me more. Last week he said love me for who I am. Love me for who I am not. Love me for what I do. Love me because of my future. Love me when I'm not me. Love me as you love yourself. And then finally, love me because I am made in the image of God. And today we are dealing with love me more. There are certain situations and conditions that we need to go the extra mile in our expression of love to those we love. Turn to three people and say the extra mile. You see, when you look at the faces of married people, they know what I'm talking about. Turn to somebody and say, talk to me, sir. If you have a fiancé, you know what I'm saying. I mean, extra mile, love me more. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Number one, love me more when I am in pain. I think somebody can relate to that. There is the tendency that um, if you're not careful, in certain conditions, you will treat certain things very lightly. Because when somebody is in pain as a result of things that are happening in their life, that is when those who love them have to go the extra what? Mile. And love them more. Don't love me when everything is only going well. But love me more when I am sick, when I am broke, and when I'm in a negative situation. And sometimes we have this tendency in life to simply say, I told you not to do that investment. And now he has taken the money. And so we begin to move away from that person. I have realized one thing. It is always better to bring somebody out of a situation and then when the person has settled down, then you can tell the person how stupid they were. You didn't hear that. But you don't tell me how stupid I am when I'm going through the crisis. You didn't hear that. You didn't hear that. I was coming to church this morning and it's funny how God gave me some very interesting examples. And then... My wife looked at my, what I was wearing and said, at the back of you, you won't see it. But it looks as if the tailor, because she's a bit critical about some things, and I am too, has sewed it in a way that it is slightly shifted. And I said to her, don't tell me. When she started, I said, don't tell me. I don't want to go to church thinking that the designer or tailor saw the thing and somewhere it went out of line or alignment. But you tell me when I am back from church. Because I can tell you, Mama V, that people in church will not see that the thing is out of line. They will only see Papa V. Therefore, when somebody is in pain, don't tell them how stupid they were to get into that pain when they are in the pain, but love them more. Love me more when I'm in pain. When I made that wrong investment, when I took that wrong decision, when people stood back and rejected me and neglected me, I was expecting you to go the extra mile with me. Love me more when I'm in pain. And when I'm in a negative situation, don't follow the crowd in condemning me, but draw me closer to you. Love me more. First Samuel chapter number one. Verse two, first Samuel chapter one. And he had two wives. The name of the one was Hannah. And Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. So you see where her pain was coming from. Now, let us look at the response of her husband to the condition and the situation she was in. 
He didn't come from a condemnational point of view. And if you read verse number five, but unto Hannah, he gave a worthy portion. For he loved Hannah, but the Lord had shut her womb. He didn't behave like one other guy in the Bible, in the book of Genesis. His name was Jacob. His wife says, give me children. The one he loved. Huh? What was her name? Rachel. Huh? You know what he said to her? Am I in the place of God? Huh? Am I God? How can I give you children? You know, the man could have been more circumspect. Oh, you know my wife. Huh? Let's keep believing God. Something will happen. But what did he say? Am I in the place of God? We use God as a shield to indirectly insult people. But look at this man. The wife was in pain. She was being teased by her rival. And to elevate, uh, elevate the pain, what did he do? He gave her a worthy portion of the meat, the food that was set. Now listen to what further he said to her. Verse 8. Then said Elkanah, her husband, to her, Hannah, why weepest thou? Why eatest thou not? Why is thy heart grieved? Am not I better than to thee than ten sons? Hey, Hannah, check me out. I'm the love of your life. Man, what are you looking for? No matter what, I'm around for you. Love me more when I'm in pain. That is the correct attitude in dealing with people when they are in a situation. Don't complicate their situation. Love them more, and then when they come out and you have anything to say, say it. But not in the situation. In fact, studying to prepare some of these messages has been a great blessing to me. Imagine the friends of Job. Job was suffering. And yet still, they were pointing fingers at Job. And insulting him and said, you are the cause of it. You are a wicked man. You are this. You have rejected God. You have forsaken God. And then Job looks at them and says, oh, ye miserable comforters. How many miserable comforters are here? We won't lift up our hands, but we are miserable comforters. Because when people have a problem, instead of us showing an attitude of love, what do we normally do? We condemn them, we criticize them, we cut them to shreds, we tear them apart, we dismantle them and reorganize them. Love me more when I'm in pain. Number two. Love me more when I don't live up to your expectation. At all. Hmm? I won't be there to put a binoculars on you. But love her more when she doesn't meet your expectation. Because you see, the extra mile you go with her will help her come to the level that you expect her to be. Love me more when I don't meet your expectation. Because in a relationship, we all have expectations. And when he doesn't meet your expectation, still love him more. You didn't hear that. You want me to only talk about him? I'm talking about you too. Let me pick your pen for you. Don't get nervous. Relax. Love me more when I don't meet your expectation. First Samuel chapter 18, verse 20. And Michal, Saul's daughter, loved David. And they told Saul, and this thing pleased him. Are you seeing it? Hallelujah. Here is somebody who loves somebody. But if you read further scriptures, what happens? David is bringing the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem. Before that incident, if you go further... You will see that even when Saul wanted to kill David, 
She put a false pillow there, dressed the pillow like David, sent him through a window for David to run away. A woman who would even risk her life for her husband. It's a good woman, isn't it? But when it came to his relationship with his God, she failed miserably. Because you see, in spite of the fact that she loved David, she loved that side of David that was the military person. That was the bold and the courageous David. But she did not understand David the worshiper. David the one who was connected to God. The most important thing in your life, in any relationship, is love somebody for their relationship with God first. And then you will understand their worship. You're not hearing me. Because here is David. And here is the king's daughter. And David is coming in worship. And he's jumping and shouting and rolling all over the place. Stripped off his clothes. Even though the Bible doesn't tell us how far he went. But he went far. Because the Bible doesn't lie. And possibly he was virtually naked. Or he was naked. It's like the way the Bible describes the crucifixion of Jesus. The Bible says he was stripped off his clothes. Hmm? It tells the truth. But when you have the picture, they put something around where? For the sake of dignity. But Jesus Christ was completely naked. Completely made to look shameful. And David danced. And what happened to Michal? How disgraceful you are. A king bringing himself so low before the women of Israel. Stripping yourself naked. What is wrong with you, King David? What was it? David was a bushman. It's true. He was a bushman. He had virtually no etiquette. Here was a king's daughter. Born to a king. Trained in the way you have to know how to eat, how to walk, how to wave your hands. Like those Wesley girls people. Why are you laughing? How to hug somebody. I have one in my house, so I know. How to lay your bed. Hey. Even how to walk. Yeah, bro. And then you go and get some crazy Adisco or St. Augustine's boy. Not in France, but that about, no. Some crazy Adisco boy. And when he comes to him, hey, Charlie, ah, is the food ready? Hey, Bob, don't, don't talk like that. Say, hello, darling. Is the food ready? Now, cha, what's wrong with that? <laughs> Good morning, darling. How are you today? Oh, what's the same? Love me when I don't meet your expectations. <laughs> Whether I like it or not, you are still married to me. And so at the end of the day, you have a responsibility to bring me to your level. And you forget that it's not only men who are caught in that trap, but also women. Because you can marry a woman, and then when you're even going out with her, baby, napkin, no. Napkin, no, yeni, yeni. Yes, I need help. We are back. Fatu na so kama. Mvamet, 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 mvamet na sa. Hey, hey, hey. Me fa, me fa. Di ama febi ano febi. Atreno, me fa atreno fa atre. Why? Hey, I had this way, Papa. Me fa fork ano swa febi. Me fa. Eh, 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 ne fork. Sekano, sekano, ni eba kuna kahono. They are not happy, you know. If I know for, can he say? No, he say. Why in a general hurry? It's like that man whose wife was supposed to prepare light soup, and he had visitors and fufu. The woman didn't know how to cook. Chale potogum fiegum pa. So when the people came and. The meat was one of the heads of the, the fish was here. There was some, everything was a whole amalgamation of uh, uh, animal, the animal kingdom and uh, half cooked and everything. Hey, or the akukwa fry, a yilai soup, akukwa wom, beef wom, 
goat meat wom kawuro su na baby no wife na world cup aduano so so a en se se nya aduano ko benyam kra ye do kra e di demu sa oduo se ah friends were sitting there <laughs> my way, wife has a special way of doing her light soup this is special try it and see no no fire what is saying no fire excuse me i'm coming <laughs> Love me when I don't meet your expectations. Because you see, at the end of the day, we are all from different backgrounds. Mikhail should have understood that the most important thing in the life of her husband was his relationship with his God. And David answered her right. He says, I was playing in the presence of God. What has it got to do with the woman? He says, I will bring myself even lower before God. Mikhail had been taught how to greet, how to talk, even how to dance. But David didn't know any of those things. He had no etiquette, no decorum. Love me more when I don't meet your expectations. And sometimes, because of the promises we make to our partners, especially those who are not getting, oh, don't worry. I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I have this, I have that. But sometimes something happens and those expectations are not met. I remember years ago when I became a Christian, I was going to Christian Action Faith Ministries. And Archbishop Duncan was telling us a story. Uh, when he got married, he told his wife, oh yeah, I'll get you a car. After the first year, the car hadn't come. After the second year, five years, still no car. So his wife said, ah, darling, not... You promised me a car. What happened to the car? Oh, it is coming. This year it will come. The one day he says, I am believing God for a car. But she didn't get angry. She understood he was a man of faith. And before he married her, he was speaking in faith. <laughs> her expectations were not met at that time. But if you are patient, your expectations will be met at a later date. Patience is a key principle in getting expectations met. It is something you must understand and something you must grasp. The Bible declares and, and says, cast not away your confidence, which has a due reward, but you have need of patience. But after that you have done the will of God, you might receive the reward. In everything in life, expectations are met with patience. Yabotre. You know, the Bible says, trust in the Lord. Key number two to get an expectation. Trust in the Lord with all thy might. And lean not on your own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him. And he will what? Direct. Key number three, commit your ways into the hands of the Lord. And he will bring it to pass. Love me more when I don't meet your expectations. Number three. This one is a difficult one, even for me. Sometimes you are preaching and then you are getting messages. And as you prepare, you wonder how you can make it through. Love me more when I do not do right. How many of you are hearing what I'm saying? Love me more when I do not do what? Right. You can stay with a woman for five years, ten years, twenty years. And yet still, there are certain things in her life she will not budge on. As much as you might not like it. Those married men, are you hearing me? How many times have you not told your wife, I like this to be put here? And after 10 years, she will still remove it and put it where? There. At a point in your life, if you're a man and you're wise, you will come to that place where you just keep quiet and not talk anymore and let life go on. I can tell you, because if you live your life complaining about everything that your wife does, 
your marriage will break down before you realize. And if you spend your life complaining about everything your husband does, your marriage will break down. Remember, when you married them, they were fully grown imagos. <laughs> Ready to become butterflies. <laughs> are you understanding me? Fully grown. Everything that makes them who they are had already been what? Inputted. And if you marry somebody at 25 or 26, don't expect to take 10 years to dismantle the way they think. It's not as easy as you think it is. Because by natural inclination, they've done certain things habitually so many years. And because of that, they do certain things by, by rote. It's like, why we are the baba. I will need trim. Huh? So when they do certain things, they do it that way. It's like a, a machine. Input, output. That's it. And it's going to take you much more than complaining to change the way people think or behave. Love me when I do not do right. That's a difficult one. Especially if you have complained and one day you will complain and complain and complain and then be wise, in, be wise enough to understand that. Stop complaining. And you know what you have to do. Change it yourself. If you put something here, you don't like it, don't say anything anymore. When you come back, take it from there put it where it's supposed to be and don't talk case close hello if you don't like how she lays the bed when you come back lay the bed hello if you don't like where he puts his clothes when you get to the room 20 times take them put it in a basket because as for me, I don't put my clothes in a basket. True. I don't have the energy and time <laughs> to carry my clothes and find the washing basket where it is. I just get there when I'm tired, take this, pew, take that, pew, put my shoes, pum. But when I come back and the thing is still there, ah, why are the things still on the floor? <laughs> because you see, I have somebody I'm expecting to watch to carry that here and put it there. Yehovah, hey, Victor say. <laughs> Amen. If you tell me there is a basket there, I will tell you I have a wife. I don't have a basket. You hear what I said? I have a what? Yeah. If you ring me and say, what food will you eat? What, what did I say? I said, I don't know. But I expect that my wife should find something for me to what? Eat. Because in actual fact, I don't really have any favorite food. And there are some foods I don't like. So I am very, very confused as regards to food. To eat or not to eat. I can decide to fast in the morning. Maybe I'm not, I, I never decided to fast the day before. But in the morning when I get up, maybe the previous day I meant to eat breakfast. Will you eat any breakfast? Uh, let me see. Will you eat breakfast second time? No. Will you eat breakfast? Yes. Ah, but I thought you said you eat. I said I'll eat. Will you eat breakfast? The thing is said though, I don't feel like eating. I'm off. Love me when I do not do right. Hello? And that is the way of life. There are certain things we worry too much about. The little, little things. The Bible says the little foxes that spoil the vine. It is unimportant. And if you look back and you see the things that happen between you and your fiancé or your husband or your wife, the little things, if you sit back, you really think about it. There are necessary petty squabbles that shouldn't even have occurred. Oh yeah, it's not necessary. It's not important. It doesn't add to your life. It doesn't take care of your wife. If today your wife bent your egg, huh? Close your eyes and eat it and go. And if you know how to fry egg, if you have a, 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 a child, oh, do you want some egg to eat? 
Come and eat the egg. And you and go and fry the egg the way you want it fried. Huh? Fried. I don't know if you are a Into I don't know if you are a Into Kusiana or say anything. What's it? Maybe a titty one. Kusiana say half done. Uh huh. Now what Chiana say? Now I'm wondering whom. Now juice is known. Now Jamana any na ye. And what? And what I'm being ye. No so I'm being ye. What did I say? So if Chiana we don't want to be ya. Oh yeah, what did? It won't kill you to spend two minutes to fry one egg. If you don't know how to fry egg, go back to your mother. Let your mother teach you how to fry egg. Love me when I do not do right. And the Bible declares in First Peter 4, 8, love covereth a multitude of sins. And there are certain things that happen. Little, little insults here. Little conversations here. Little hurts and pains that occur that cause people to feel bitter. And sometimes, do you realize that the things we say as regards to insults, it's sometimes it comes as a result of an emotional, sudden emotional outburst and instability. In fact, sometimes the person doesn't really mean to say what they are saying. So you hear things like, this is foolish. How are you insulting me? That's the first thing your husband will say. Hey, man, are you insulting me? No, 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 no. And you try to explain. You realize you made a mistake. And the funny thing about girls is that when they do that, instead of saying, I'm very sorry, she said, no, 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 you are, you are trying to miss, uh, uh, represent me. I am trying to tell you that, I'm not saying you are foolish. I'm trying to say that at this moment, you are behaving in a particular way. And uh, it's foolish, you know. Everything they will try to explain. Love me when I do not do right. Ask for the intellectual move. They will chill them. But I told somebody the other day, you see, there are certain things that you do. Men tend to leave certain things very easy. But there's a certain kind of insult if you insult a man. You remember it for 50 years. There are certain words you don't use for a black man. Like you are stupid. Huh? You are foolish. And in three, they say, Where was sir? Can you buy a teaching with you? If you use that word and he says, I've forgiven you, he's a liar. He will remember it deep in his heart. And one day, something will crop up. Ah, you told me. So be careful how you speak. And there are certain things you will carry on with him. And Quietly, or wall pin, soon as a wall pin. When you buy also, wall wall pin. As a woman, we know them. Anything, they'll get hurt. But the good part is that they tend to let go very easily. But she will not forget. I tell you, a woman will not forget. She will let go, but she doesn't forget. It takes a man a long time. To heal from wounds that are very deep. But superficial wounds are very easy for a man to let go. Love me when I do not do right. Because love covereth a multitude of sins. 